scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Praise God. If somebody comes to the school and blesses you with anything, no matter how old you think you are, you must tell the principal about it. That on behalf of the school, they gave you 100 naira and you just said thank you. And you just took it. No way. No way. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. I'm talking about perspectives of God. Are you getting my point? This was a great perspective of God. Then this was how we used to greet. Good morning, sir. That's how you greet. Look, all this, I'm not... You go home straight there. You are you are leaving. It's not an issue of call. You know how the Bible says it: rebuke one, then call another. You are going home from the first day. Yeah. You would have to anybody, oh, not just those who are older than you. If you are to greet now, you will bend down and greet. No matter how tall you are, not not bend down like this. No, bend down very well. Take your time. And then if you did something wrong, before they flog you, they will tell you the offense and what the Bible says about what you have done. Don't think the, the biblical statement will exempt the flogging. When they finish, they will tell you on account of this and in view of what I've explained to you, do you now see that this flogging is necessitated? I'm serious. I am very, very serious. Koinonia plans to have a school in the future. This is the exact curriculum. Be happy to bring your children. I guarantee you. Yes. Yes. We observed siesta. Whether you want to sleep or not. They brought a medical doctor who taught us the benefits. Once it's time, go and if you cannot, you will have to lie down. Said it's good for your body. What have you learned? What have you learned? What perspective have you rejected? I don't know where that man is. I only encountered him for one year. But my plan, in fact, I still plan, I planned it this year, but that I was going to look for him anywhere. I'm waiting. The, the gift I wanted to buy is too small. I want to maybe something like buy a car. Eh? Or build a house. This is the kind of gift you give a man for molding your life like that. We were taught to say thank you. You don't say thank you, they will whip the devil out of you. Even if it is your right, you don't say thank you, they will whip you. You are rebellious, you will go home with a letter tight. And the reason is that you are being a hindrance to the spiritual progress of other people. Have you ever seen a man that strict and yet so loving? We were taught that a woman who is not your wife, if you don't take care, is dangerous. We were taught that. So all these mindset people had, all these boyfriend and girlfriend thing, people, I never got into those things. We were advised from day one, Jesus is coming. There is heaven, there is hell. They listed all the people that will not make heaven. 
And they told, I'm serious about it. They told us very seriously. Sex before marriage is wrong. Say it. And we said it and it entered our brains. If you see a lady aside from brotherly love and kindness, it ends there. Any spirit suggesting any other thing, you drive it far from you. The question I'm asking you is, what perspective have you not been taught that has, has, has refused perfection from finding expression? There are probably some of us, bless you, who you grew up under a man who loved God and loved women dangerously. God and women occupy almost the same position. Is that true? I love God, oh. But these sons of, these daughters of Israel, daughters of Zion, and that mindset rubbed off on some of us. We are loving God, but you find out that it's like a cancer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like a cancer is still eating us. You love God, but that women dimension, so God cannot commit a great ministry to you. When I traveled, they told me about a great prophet of God, mighty prophet. I had the opportunity to see that guy, very short guy. My goodness. Look, that guy solved the spiritual calculus of prophecy. Ah! No, no. See, what the things you see on TV, I tell you, is kindergarten. I saw prophecy plus plus. But another man of God that I stayed with began to talk to me and he said there is just one limitation to this man's life. Women. As prophetic as he is, he will never be able to pick from the vistas of his sp the spirit when Jezebel is coming. Women. Probably, I tell you the truth, that guy has not been exposed to certain teachings. See, it's not about the words. It's the impartation and the perspective it tilts your spirit to. There are many of us who have probably never had a message on sin. S-I-N. It's even sounding strange to some of us now. Never had a message on sin. And if you see a tape, sin, just throw it and say, God forbid. This is not for me. Just listen. No, God forbid. You're ever on your television set and you see men of God like W.F. Kumu. You say, change that channel, please. Change it. Very quickly, we are, we are trying to grow. We don't want anybody to, you see that? And we endorse it as spiritual maturity. I am telling you tonight, if we are not careful, the church will lose on so many perspectives. Praise the Lord. I remember I went to minister, I think it was with Ike, we traveled two years or so ago. While we were ministering, I didn't know that the church hates music like this going on when you are preaching. You know, to be setting the atmosphere. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. The man of God said, you know, he wanted to come and introduce me and I think Ike or so had started playing the keyboard. The man said, when I'm on stage, everywhere be becomes silent. Because the word of God is about to come. And I said, Lord, how are we going to do this now? I don't know how God did it that day. But God still glorified himself. Everybody say perspectives. Say perspectives. You need to open yourself to other perspectives that are available in the body. Now, please let me balance something. Look at me. As a pastor... You are responsible for the primary spiritual feeding of your people. Pastor there does not just mean pastoral office. As a shepherd or a leader. Are you getting my point? You cannot allow your sheep to just be victims of any doctrine and any theology. It is irresponsible. It's the same thing as having children and leaving your gate open. And you see one man coming to talk to your daughter. And you say, when you are, free, when you are done, please come inside. One day you won't see her again. She has run away based on what the person was telling her. Is that true? But at the same time, there is this attitude I've seen in the body of Christ that needs correction. 
This ownership attitude. Have you seen that kind of thing? It's dangerous. If you are a pastor here or a man of God in ministry and you are involved in it, stop it. This overprotection of people. Where did you go to? I went for a conference. Where? In Ibadan. Which man of God did you go to listen to? So you are trying to say what I'm giving you is not enough. It's called insecurity. It's called insecurity. So we men of God sometimes have stopped believers from receiving other dimensions that are resident in God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Where are you going? I'm going for a dance, a dance program. There are some ladies that are into dancing. They love God. What kind of dance? Dance where? In the church? You are going to watch dance. This is how all of you have become corrupt. Whereas, these people have been fasting and praying for days. And say, Lord, through this ministry, affect somebody. So you carry that mindset that everybody you see dancing is a devil. Yet, David danced. Yet, it was because Herod's daughter danced that the head of John the Baptist went. Are you following what I'm saying? I will never, I have made this vow under God, I will never rob any one of us of the opportunity to hear the truth. For those of us in school of ministry, you know how many videos we have watched so far from different gifts in the body representing different perspectives. There are dimensions God did not give me. I will never try to struggle. It's amazing. It's amazing, brothers and sisters. There are people in this city because of doctrinal issues, they may never come for miracle service to be healed. If it is not my man of God that prays for me to be healed, i rather die like that. Have you seen people like that? Oh, how sad. Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Everybody say kingdom. Shout it, kingdom. This is the mindset you must have as a believer. Not just church. Maintain your loyalty and sincerity because you must be committed and planted. They that are planted in the house of God. You should become the greatest fanatic over the work that God has given you and the ministry he has given you to serve. However, realize this, that there are different perspectives. The question you have been asking for years, God has anointed a man to answer it. You have refused to listen. There are people who criticize me today and will never listen to my teachings. They have seen me in dreams laying hands on them. They got up in the morning and casted me away. And they are sitting and their families are dying. Probably some of you are like that even as you are standing right now. You must embrace what the Spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. You must embrace what the Spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. And the way you do that is by celebrating what he's doing across the, the life. See, let me tell you. If you find yourself being initiated into this ministry of criticism to see somebody like our daddy now, and then you begin to talk against him and criticize him and say a lot of things in a bid to prove spirituality. I'm telling you the diagnosis. You are a child. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hear young people like myself preach. And I've been amazed at the arrogance which we they spoke with. It scared me. Scared me in a way that I said, and then it's amazing because in all sincerity, some of these ministries, it's not even maybe membership. No, it's not membership. It's not prosperity. It's not even healing. It's not even demonstration of the anointing. You are average in everything, yet you are standing audaciously to talk about people. If you are involved in that, hear me now. Repent. There is a way. It seems right to you, 
But God is speaking to you that the end thereof are the ways of death. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of you, you have criticized prayer ministries. You see people praying and you look and say, it's not all about prayer, 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 prayer. Shut up. You are speaking based on the perspective you have seen. You see believers gather around and they are praying and you are speaking. Castigating people. Say it's not all about prayer, it's all about the word of God. Could it be that there is something you are not seeing? There are others who look at ministers that are calm. Maybe people like Samade and me and the rest. And you just feel these guys are not as hot as I want. What authority do you have? What result has your life produced to earn you the right? See, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said something. He said, never talk about a man of God until you have done twice what he has done. I hear ministers criticize crowd. And they say it's not about crowd. They are talking to 12 people. If you are so anointed, does God not want your voice to be heard? We are going to the nations. Where are the nations? He said they are coming. You are failing on a principle. There are lots of ministries. People will come and sit down and they are sweating. Heat is killing them. But the word of God is coming. It's not because fans are not available. It's not because they've stopped selling AC. Limitations. There are many ministries who are people who are so rich, but the devil is destroying their lives. There are all kinds of scandals from one scandal to another, but they will not tap into the true spirit of holiness. Open our eyes. See, you must diligently open yourself to the perspective that you see lacking in your spiritual life. Are you getting my point? If you find out that you are not prayerful, go and get messages of Archbishop Duncan Williams. Let him impart this. It will come. Oh yes, it will land on you for sure. You find out that there is lack of excellence in your life. Go and look for messages by people like Matthew Ashimolo or Samadeemi. And add that touch of excellence to your spirituality. You think you're a lazy man of God. You quote every scripture wrongly, but the power of God still moves. You are theologically wrong. Your presentation on stage is wrong. You know nothing about homiletics. You do not have the accurate understanding of the presentation of the gospel. Go and find some of the pastors in our orthodox churches that spent decades in Bible schools getting masters and PhD and sit down. Let them tell you a little about church history. Let them tell you a little about homiletics. Let it add to what you have. They may not be able to heal your sick body, but they can add a touch that will take your ministry to the next level. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? Don't sit down there tied up and say, it has to be this way. It is my way. The jawbone of an ass has never been a weapon of war. Has it ever been a weapon of war? Never. But when situation came, he was able to discern Samson now and he used the jawbone of an ass. If he was waiting for a knife, he would have died there. Who told you knife is the only weapon they use for war? Have you found out that there is a God who can put power upon the jawbone of an ass? That's why there are many of you, once you see the anointing oil, or maybe you see somebody come with water like this and say, please, pray on it for me. Now I say, nah, these are doctrines of demons. Who told you? Who told you is a doctrine of demons? Is it what you were taught? Or is it what God revealed to you? Somebody now comes and says, I see an angel. He says, witchcraft. God never does. It is through the word. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord.
Matthew 15. This is our time. Always flies. Did you know I've not even touched what I want to teach tonight? Well, we'll just pray. Even if we pray from here, at least you got something. Matthew 15. Verse 1. Matthew 15. Please, let's hurry up. Matthew 15. And Jesus came to the scribes and the Pharisees which were of Jerusalem. Then came to Jesus, sorry, scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem, saying, verse 2, let's hurry up, just keep running it like that. Why do your disciples tra transgress what? Question, what is the tradition of the elders? Why do your disciples do things differently? They are introducing a perspective we are not used to. We have a tradition. A way things are done. We don't believe in the laying on of hands. We don't believe that the power of God can come under someone. Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of men? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Next verse. But he answered and said, why do ye also transgress what? By God is asking you a question. Which will you choose to uphold? To transgress the traditions of men. You are in a place and the Lord is asking you, lay hands on this sick body. And you say, no, Kai, I'm not, I'm not used to it. I'm not saying go and be a rebel in your church. That's not what I'm saying. But you are in your house. They've never seen the laying on of hands and God is saying, go ahead and do it. If you don't lay hands and rebuke the spirit of death, someone will die. And you transgress, please let's go back, you transgress the commandment of God so that you will keep your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded saying, honor thy father and mother and he that cursed father and mother, let him die the death. Next verse. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Verse 6. And honor not his father and his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect. You can make the power of God, the word of God, the reality of spiritual things of none effect by tradition. Would you rather pray in tongues or be accepted among your friends who have said there's, there's nothing. Praying in tongues is just jargon. It's just rubbish. But something in your spirit tells you there is a higher spiritual experience. It may not be your fault. You were not taught. But now that you have heard the word, it puts pressure on you to make a decision. Whether or not to embrace that which is spiritual or remain in the traditions of men. Change is one thing that people hardly subscribe to. It's a difficult thing to change because we love things happening as usual. We love things happening normally. Let it be happening the way I have always known it. And the moment I see another perspective, then it is not of God. It is based on this that the ministry of what we call criticisms and all of that stem up. It is not done this way. It is not done this way. I've even had preachers who preach that putting a stage, putting a little place like this to honor the man of God and guests is carnal. Everybody is one before God. And in those churches, when the pastor comes, he can sit anywhere. Once it's time for someone, he can come out. It is lack of excellence. Yet, it may not be embraced as thus. It may be termed spirituality. God is speaking to you. Could it be that if you embrace a dimension of God, you would have passed the interview. You entered the interview as a man of God, not as an employable person. Praise the Lord. 
you didn't dress well because you felt the Holy Ghost is with me and you entered the people were looking at you and young man keep quiet I can't keep quiet this is what I believe because you were not taught the principles of excellence you called it spirituality but you've lost your job because of it you were not taught diligence that a Christian is also an agent of national transformation and time to walk in the office you are fasting and praying and you are not doing anything you left your job undone when it was time to promote you you saw yourself being promoted in the spirit physically they demoted you because you are not adding to the advancement of the group are you hearing what i'm saying and there are people who just sit down and feel i know all the principles i know the principles of business expertise i understand the psychology of communication until somebody fires an arrow from your village and you wake up and one leg cannot move and that's the day you are supposed to report to be promoted then you know that there is more to life than psychology and philosophy i'm telling you the truth when satan comes he finds the dimension you have ignored in god that becomes his access point in your life so there are anointed but broke believers there are broke there are rich but carnal believers who are going to hell. There are anointed believers with no character. Because they've been taught it's all about the anointing. Once the anointing is in the building, people must come. So you can be sleeping around. You are anointed. And you know, we convince ourselves that because you indulge yourself in all kinds of things. And you come back and see the hand of God. It convinces you that God is with you. You do not know that it is a dimension of God's mercy speaking to you. Samson said, I will arise as before. And all of a sudden he found out that he's here. He said, you have been weighed, O king, in the balance. God weighs men. Oh. He won't weigh you in one day. He will keep weighing you. you will be. That's why you see a flourishing ministry will just dry up at once. Four years ago, this man was a great man everywhere. But now, the lampstand has been taken. Let me tell you, God can take away the candlestick of men and give others. Read your Bible. He took away the talent from the man who had one and gave another person. May God not take your position and give another. Saul was still in the palace. Whereas the mantle had left him. Many churches have been stunted. They are, they are at the verge of the next season of their lives. I was listening to a man of God and I had a revelation that blew my head. He was on YouTube. I don't even know him. Just, me, just getting for the first time. And this guy shared something that scattered my head. And it was at a season in my life where I needed that exact kind of wisdom. I used to struggle in my life trying to get approval from everybody. When I started out, every time people said things that were bad about me, I felt so bad. And I, I went out of my way to try to do everything to people. I could borrow money to give somebody else so that you would eat food with it. And run into problems I could go that far because people made me look like God sent you to us and then I listened to an apostle of wisdom dr. Mike Budok and he taught on certain mistakes he made when he started ministry he said never try to do to people what only God can do to them deliverance that was it I learned how to sleep soundly because I didn't used to sleep. I said, how can my sheep be awake and me am awake now? <laughs> I read now that I am the good shepherd. That I am is Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when it's time to walk, I walk. When it's time to sleep, I sleep. It is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber. I am part of the fold of Israel. Are you seeing now? 
I probably, I don't know, maybe I would have died by now. That was part of the wisdom that made us to fix counseling session just once. It was getting too much. Everybody would call at every time. I became a receptionist. Hundreds of phone calls, like every 30 minutes, someone is calling and the person can cry for 50. I was wearing out, literally. And then the Lord said, why don't you put something like that? Some of you are in that thing right now. You, have, you are owing everybody and you didn't do anything with the money because you want to be a good person. Visitors came to your house. You went and borrowed 10,000 naira to buy them spaghetti. You bought them books. You went to Jordan bookstore, bought books. I want you to be spiritual. Now you are in trouble. And the people have turned their back and they are insulting you. Because you want a good name. Is someone learning something here? There are many of us. You are spiritual. But if only you learned that it is part of wisdom to delay gratification until God blesses you. Take life easy. No sharp, 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 sharp. No. I will embrace every dimension that is relevant for the purpose that God has anointed and brought me in the earth. There are vessels, there are dimensions in the spirit I want to be blessed and prosperous. I don't want to be a struggling man of God. I don't want Koinonia to be a struggling ministry. At the same time, I don't want to be a carnal man of God. I want to walk in true holiness and righteousness before the God of my salvation. I want to walk spiritually aligned. I want to be at the cutting edge of what God is doing. I don't want to go out, be extinct spiritually because I do not sustain the present truth. Of what the Holy Spirit is communicating. And so I open myself in the spirit. To all of the dimensions that are possible. This is what Koinonia is all about. Opening us up. To the dimensions of the spirit. That are available for us. Maybe we'll take it another time. I actually plan on talking about divine direction. Very, very important. Ah! Can I just run through what I wrote like a note? Will that be okay? Because I know that someone needs this message. Divine direction. I will just read it like a lecture. I'm sorry about it, okay? We'll have time to look at it again. I love you too much. It's pinching me. I don't want us to just go like that. I know that you've gotten something. But I just want to be able to bring in what we have prayed and prepared. To fulfill your assignment in life, you need divine guidance. Oh, this is very important. You need divine guidance. No man outgrows the need to be guided. No man. No matter how spiritual you are, you can never outgrow the need to be guided by God. Only a fool in his heart will say there is no God. Confusion, I wrote here, is part of the limitation of mankind. I was to share with us the need to seek spiritual direction, divine direction in our lives. Divine direction. Very, very important. Proverbs 16 verse 25. Very quickly. 16 verse 25. Everybody say confusion. Look up please. There are many of us right now. That if a prophet. A genuine prophet of God. Would enter here right now. And have a one on one session with us. And say by the grace of God. I will talk with you one on one. And. Let's hear what God has to say about your life. I guarantee you that even if it's a night vigil, many of us will wait. Because you say, Lord, you must speak to me. Many of our prayer requests during miracle service is not necessarily about sickness, but about divine direction. Is that true? We want to be guided towards marriage. You want to know what is the next thing. Some of us are in ministry right now. You don't even know the next step. 
some of us probably are finished you want to know am i still going to be in zaria am i going to go somewhere is that the scripture what did i say proverbs what oh no no psalm sorry psalm 37 verse 23 i'm sorry psalm 37 verse 23 we need divine direction in our lives you can see a great destiny brothers and sisters listen to me inside and outside there are many of us right now what you need to see the next dimension of your christian experience and to see the next dimension of your progress in life is divine direction let's read it one to read the steps of a good man are what ordered the steps the word good man there is the word righteous man too the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord shout order my steps say it order my steps god is speaking to us honestly i wish i had time to walk this thing because i really came that's the thing about passion you keep talking and talking and there is almost no time i really plan to teach seriously on this because many of us right now we are in a straight betwixt you are ready to enter a relationship but you need divine direction you are ready to get married but you need divine direction as a gentleman you want to start putting structures to your life but you need divine direction and let me tell you something it is terrible to be found in a place where god's anointing has not gone before you you will suffer you will struggle nothing will work when you are in the geography when you are in your assigned place everything is commanded to work for you there why do we need divine direction our decisions in life are based on the information we have and our current level of exposure this is one of the reasons why we need divine direction our decisions in life are usually based on the information we have and our current level of exposure which many times is limited I need divine direction because if God does not direct me I can sit down and believe this is the prophetic destiny of koinonia I can look out and say wow there's a crowd inside and outside I'm comfortable I'm comfortable it's okay nothing more whereas God's idea God's mandate upon my life is the nations are you getting what I'm saying Abraham had about 316 or so men but his prophetic destiny was the entire earth our decisions are limited our informations are limited and we make decisions based on those informations let me tell you something your decisions and your perspective about life can be wrong that's why you need divine direction you need divine direction jesus said something very interesting um in luke chapter 11 let's look at luke chapter 11 from verse 34 to 36 jesus was speaking about light he said be sure that your light is not darkness that means you can be looking and you can be thinking that you're walking in illumination whereas you're walking in darkness the light of the body is the eye therefore when thy eye is single thy whole body is full of light but when thy eye is evil your body is also full of darkness 35 there's a warning for us everyone read want to read take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness that means you can be making decision based on a truth you think you know whereas is wrong hallelujah for instance i will never marry a man who is rich who is not rich for instance I will never marry a broke man i don't want to suffer that's a light that you have you think it is light whereas when you allow god to help you you will see that is darkness what if you marry the rich man and he becomes poor two years after your marriage as poor as you would have run away before the marriage what is the same thing are you seeing that 
I will only marry a, a lady who can climb some 119. It's a mindset. You think it's light, whereas it is darkness. So we make a lot of decisions in our lives. I will never get a job that gives me 20,000. There is a job for you to start out. You say, God forbid, I'm bigger than 20,000. If I cannot start with 250,000, except I'm not a Christian. Seven years, there's no job. The highest you have seen is 30,000. Whereas if you were faithful, one of your customers would have come and you would have left that place. It was the test of faithfulness. You've never held 50,000 of your own, yet you talk about 250,000 as if it's five naira. Mindsets. So we need divine decisions that can be higher than what we would have decided for ourselves. Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12. We need divine direction because our perceptions about life can be wrong. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then said he, thou hast well seen. That means you can see wrongly. He said, for I will hasten my word that you have now seen. That means your speed in life is also based on your perception. You don't see wrongly, you will not move fast in life. But the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Very quickly. What does it take to receive divine direction from God? I really feel sad. I'm just doing a lecture. I'm, I'm so sorry. Our time is gone. And I want us to pray. Number one. Requirements. To be divinely directed by God. Number one. You must admit that you are limited. You must admit. You must break your pride. And admit that you are limited. It is not. Listen. It's not an insult. Look up, please. I want to teach you this about life. Please and please. Do not be embarrassed when you find out you do not know everything. Are you hearing me? Do not, even if you are a celebrity, do not be embarrassed that you do not know everything. Every time I see our daddy come and sit down here, I am very humbled by his humility. Brothers and sisters, this is a professor. The brightest and the finest in his field. Yet, our daddy will come and sit down quietly and you see him jotting down. And a small boy like me, his son is just talking. It's like I'm talking to my father and he's writing. How many of us can have that humility? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must admit that you are limited. No matter how prophetic you think you are. No matter how apostolic you think you are. Many times when I cry before God, I say, Lord, help this small boy. If you don't help me, I will make a lot of decisions that are foolish and stupid. That's how I cry before God. I'm not insulting myself. I know it's the truth. And I say, Lord, send your word. Send me the word of the Lord. How many of us here can admit that I am great, but I am limited? If I depend on my strength alone, I will mix intelligent and foolish decisions. If you depend on your ability to choose a wife, you will choose nonsense. If you depend on your ability to choose a job, you may choose rubbish. It may look nice, but that is the road of perdition. If you choose where you want to stay by yourself, you say, I want to stay in Lagos or Abuja, my Tama or somewhere there, somewhere peaceful. I don't want, some of you are already laughing, but God is saying, that's not my path for you. You are saying, I take authority over it. You really think it would have been my desire to be doing ministry in Zaria? How about gentlemen? I know what God has put in me. Oh, it's not pride. 
He tried for me. I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. You think I don't want to be in a place where my grace will be or not? Where after a sermon, a man of God will drop a jeep somewhere and say, Man of God, this is a little seal of your apostleship. You think I will not want a place where they will buy suits and members will just come and build a house for me or buy me a private jet. But you see, listen, it is not of him that willeth. It is not of him that runneth. If you cannot wait for God to direct you, I'll never forget I was rejoicing. The year we're about to prepare for Koinonia to start, I was so happy. Because I was saying, Lord, my, share my assignment now is over. Let me run and find something very useful and do. Let me go and open up a very big ministry somewhere and big business somewhere. Let me just enjoy my life. And then God summoned a meeting at once. And when I went, I almost fainted the day God told me. Those who were around me, my reaction, it was like, how about God? How about God? And I've come to a point where I don't give God. If God says stay in Zaria forever, I stay in Zaria forever. I honor great men of God like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Look at the place. Look at the kind of anointing that man of God has. And look at where he is. Look at where his international headquarters is. There are some decisions people take. When you look, you know God spoke to them. The devil will never come and tell you that kind of decision. Even you, you know it's God that spoke. Praise the Lord. But there are many of us, we will never admit that we are limited. We like judging things. I want a, min a ministry that um, is this and that and that and that. And God is saying, this is not the part. He say, I want a healing ministry. God says, you are not called into a healing ministry. Say, but that's what is raining. That's, I want to chop too. God says, uh -uh. you are an evangelist. You will not have a church. You say, so how will I get the cars and the houses? God will say, you just preach. Say, Lord, I need a base for my ministry. There must be a church. You open a church and all the trouble in your life comes from that church. Say divine direction. Number two, if you want divine direction in your life, you must engage in the ministry of prayer. There is no direction without prayer. Please listen to me. Prayer is a mighty weapon that positions you for divine direction. When you pray, God directs you through certain ways. These are subtopics under prayer now. It is prayer that will open you up to any other way that God will lead you. Please take what I'm saying seriously. It doesn't matter how else. It is prayer that will open the door. When you pray, the first way God can direct you is through light from scripture. Psalm 119 verse 105. Just write it. It's a lecture so that we don't have to go there. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word, O God, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hebrews chapter 1 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners so God speaks in diverse manners. But in these last days, he has chosen to focus on speaking to us through his son. Hallelujah. So God speaks to men how? In diverse man manners. But in these last days, that his primary means of communication is through his son, which is the word. The word of God. Number two, when you pray, you will hear the voice of the spirit. Isaiah 30 verse 21. It says you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way. Walk ye in it. The direct voice of the spirit. Either audibly or speaking to you through your spirit man. Ah, I wish I had time to walk this. John 16 verse 13 also. It says when he the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. Guide you. Guide you. The third way, when you engage in prayer, you will receive divine encounters. Dreams, visions, revelatory experiences. There are lots of instances in scripture 
where God used divine encounters to bring revelations to people, especially dreams and visions. Genesis 41 verse 1 to 7, we see that the prophetic destiny of Egypt, they were forewarned. Genesis 41, don't turn there. Just write it, please. Verse 1 to 7. It was the Pharaoh who had a dream about the period of plenty and the period of lack. And it helped them to prepare. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 2 to 3, Moses had an encounter that revealed to him his prophetic destiny as a deliverer. It is one way God speaks and directs men. 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 4 to 15. 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 4 to 15. After Solomon loved the Lord and he offered a thousand bond offerings, the Bible says God came to him in a dream and he received an impartation and God gave him certain revelations about the spirit of understanding that would be at work in him to rule Israel. In Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 10, they all record the conversion of Paul. Remember, it was a divine encounter. Paul had a vision where he saw Jesus Christ. And then he became blind. But even in his blindness, the Bible says he went to the house of Judas. And Paul was praying. While he was praying, he saw um, um, who, who is the Ananias in a dream, in a vision coming. Because that's what God told Ananias. He said, brother Saul, he's in a house. He prayed and behold, he has seen you in a vision. So you can see how encounters connected men to their prophetic destiny. The fourth way God will give you divine direction and guidance in your life is through spiritual authorities. Fathers, mentors, deacons and elders as we have it in our various and then the aged ones too elderly people not just elders in church men who have had the advantage of age in their lives but my focus here is fatherhood and mentorship one great platform to receive spiritual direction you can be struggling over a thing for years and you meet a man and in five minutes he supplies wisdom to your life Hallelujah. Wisdom to your life. I'll never forget one of our boards of trustees. I met him one time and we got talking. And I was sharing with him about something. And while I was talking, to me it was a big mountain. I was sharing and he was just looking at me. And after I finished saying it, he just laughed. Do this, do this, do that. And that was the end of it. It's amazing that what is a mountain to you, somebody has been matching that mountain for many years. Hallelujah. It's amazing that we go through challenges in our lives and you think it will overwhelm you. I've shared it again and again. Even with the little opportunity that God has given for ministry and counseling. When I talk to people, they come with seemingly mountains of challenges. And while they are talking, I'm just looking at them and wondering, is this it? This is what you call a mountain? And I just tell them, do this, do that, and that's the end of it. One of my great friends was struggling in ministry. Things were tied down, honestly. Things were really, really tied down. And he came and met me. He said, man of God, what is the way out? What do I need to do? This, you know, this, there's no opening. There's no door opening in ministry. And I just told him, this is what God is saying. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And that was how his ministry opened up. In very strange ways. A great man, many of you know him. He's called Bishop Bernard Jordan. He has a son called Manasseh Jordan. They are great prophets. But he used, to, he used to keep a certain kind of hair. And it seemed like it, his ministry was not received. Because people doubted him because of the way he dressed, the way he looked, and the way he carried out his prophetic ministry. But genuine man of God, fabulously wonderful man of God. And one day, Mike Mudo called him and said, I want to have a meeting with you. He said, if you adjust A, B, C, D in your life, I think you will be an extremely great man of God. And he listened. And the moment he took those steps, brothers and sisters, it was another dimension. Wisdom. The last way that God can direct you is through the prophetic ministry. 
the prophetic ministry. Both the prophetic office and revelatory gifts of prophecy. I'll dwell here for two minutes and we'll pray. In 1 Samuel, write the scriptures. The encounter between Saul and Samuel was through the prophetic ministry. Direction came for his destiny through the prophetic ministry. 1 Samuel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 7. It was when Saul met the prophet that his life was altered forever. I'm not talking of all these prophet, prophet things that we have around. There are many people who say they are prophets. Let me tell you the truth. They are not prophets. They have revelatory gifts. The prophetic office has an anointing. You never meet a true prophet of God or one who is anointed to function in dimensions of the prophetic. It must not be called a prophet. It could be called an apostle like, like Apostle John C. Suleiman. Or it could even be called a pastor. But that he has that potent prophetic dimension. You will never meet him and your life will remain the same. I tell you the truth. In 2 Kings chapter 8, from verse 7 to 15, I want us to read that one. 2 Kings chapter 8. Guys, don't project it until I ask us to do so, so that our time is gone. I mean, this project, this one now. 2 Kings 8, verse 7 to 15. is the, an interesting story between prophet Elisha, the king of Syria called Ben-Hadad, and one boy called Hazael, who later became king. Let me show you how that God can speak over the prophetic destiny of a man and bring direction to your life through the prophetic. Let's read it very quickly. Elisha came to, ben, to Damascus and ben that the king of Syria, was sick and it was told him saying, the man of God is come. Hit our next verse. And the king said unto Hazael, Hazael was his boy, like his servant, take a present in thy hand See why it's good not to go and meet a man of God empty handed. And go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord. So how do you inquire of the Lord? Through the ministry of the prophets too. Are you seeing that? Inquire of the Lord saying, shall I recover from this disease? I want to know so that I can put my house in order. Next verse please. So Hazael went, hold on. Hazael never knew that he was going to encounter prophecy in his life. Hazael went to meet the man of God and took a present with him even of every good thing of Damascus 40 camels burden and came and stood before him and said thy son ben Hadad, king of Syria has sent me to thee saying shall I recover from this disease now watch this verse 10 and Elisha said unto him go and say unto the man of God thou mayest certainly recover he said how be it let me tell you the truth I'm just saying that so that the king will not kill you. The truth of the information is the king is going to die. How be it the Lord has shown me that he shall surely die. Next verse. Watch this. I wish I had time. I would have acted the drama. And he settled his countenance. After speaking to him, the prophet just found his face and started crying. And Hazael said, what is wrong? The Bible says... He settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed and the man of God wept. Why did he weep? Next verse. And Hazael said, why weepeth my Lord? And he answered, because I know the evil that thou will do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds shall thou set on fire and their young men will thou slay with the sword and thou will dash their children and reap up their women with child. Prophecy revealing to a man the mistakes that he's going to make in his life the next verse and Hazael said but what is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing and Elisha answered the Lord has shown me that you are the king I came as a boy but by prophecy God is showing that you will be king but I'm telling you now when you become king correct your mistakes this is what I'm seeing through prophecy. Correct it. You are going to be so carried away by royalty. You see how prophecy is powerful. And you can just look and say, you are going to marry, a, I'm joking, no? you are going to marry a man of God. But as you get married, I see that you can be very materialistic. Start praying about it. You see the power of prophecy revealing things to us in our lives. 
Or be careful. I see an expansion coming. But I see that pride can take over your life. That's God speaking. Instead of arguing and say, God, me, you go back and say, Lord, I align with prophecy. 2 Kings 6 verse 25, down to the end, tells us about the famine in Samaria and how the word of the Lord came through a genuine prophetic ministry and in 24 hours it ended famine. 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 25 to the end. And then in Isaiah 38, we read about Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a great man and he was sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet came and said, Put your house in order. Thus said the Lord, you shall surely die. And Isaiah turned his face to the wall and he started crying. He said, oh Lord, remember. And the Lord sends the prophet to go back and tell him, I have added. Let me pause. Ah, let me pause and talk a bit. Just give me one minute to talk about this. Listen. Do you realize that it is important not just to hear what God said yesterday, but what he is saying now? Listen, God's plans does not change. His purposes does not change, sorry. But his plans can change. Please, I need you to, say, to get this. I really wanted to discuss this thing extensively, but I apologize. God can plan that you take a flight to Lagos. But because of evil, he can decide that you go by road. So, the destination you arrived, but the way to get there can change. Many of us tie ourselves down. God said this yesterday. And we never open ourselves to find out. Could it be that God is saying something else? We feel if you bend to something else that God is saying. It proves that you did not hear God. I'm showing you now in Isaiah 38. A true prophet came with a word from the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. You are in business with a guy. You started the business. He was born again and he loved God. Now he has entered into armed robbery and witchcraft and occultism. But in the vision you saw, you saw that you are partners in progress. And now God has been speaking to you. Get out. Cut yourself away from that devilish association. You started ministry with a man. You were both genuine. But now he has dappled his hands into a lot of things. And you have already said we are bosom friends and we are destiny helpers. But God is speaking currently. Severe yourself from that relationship. Listen, it's not enough to hear what God said yesterday. The word of the Lord can change to suit his purposes. He is still God. When he says, I am the Lord, I change it not. You better understand what he's saying. My purposes remain eternal. Listen, if God has destined that Tosin works in a prophetic ministry and she refuses to work in that prophetic ministry, God will not allow that position vacuum. He will raise another person. His plans changed, but his purposes remain eternal. Are you getting what I'm saying? Isaiah 38 tells us that. So that many of us do not die in Egypt. Was it not? Listen. Do you know it was hunger that took men to Egypt? That's a message on its own. Joseph, it was famine. When famine hit the whole world, hunger drove them to Egypt and they went and became slaves there. But now God was telling them, you people will go out of Egypt. They had been there. And they rejected the word of the Lord. When they came out to Egypt now, watch this. God told them, start moving. You are going to a, a promised land. But at a point, God told them, mark time. Is that true? Remain there while Moses goes up the mountain. For 40 days, there was no advancement and they got angry. They were waiting. They said, God gave us an instruction to move forward. Is it the same God now that will tell us to stay? Brothers and sisters, God who talks to you in the mountain is still God in the valley. You must learn to understand the current rema. That the word of God is saying concerning your life. This already is somebody's word this night. And then finally, prophet Agabus. In Acts chapter 11, from verse 27 to 30, 
That's the first time we see that prophets came into a city. So the ministry of prophets has been there long in the Bible. Not a prophet. Prophets. I wish we can just see that scripture. Acts chapter 11 from verse 27. Prophets came. Agabus prophesied famine that was coming. And the church prepared for the famine. And in these days came prophets, not one, many prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch, 28. And there stood one of them named Agabus. And he signified by the spirit that there should be great death, famine throughout the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar, 29. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Let's stop there. So we see that Agabus came and he gave a prophetic word. And it saved the destiny of a nation. The second time we hear about Agabus is in chapter 21, verse 10 to 11. Just write it. Where he entered and he saw Paul. And he took Paul's girdle and tied himself. He said, whoever owns this girdle, this is how the nation of Israel, this is how the people of God in Jerusalem, they will hold you and tie you. Could it be that many of us have not been divinely directed because we have not tapped into all of these avenues? But I told you it starts with admitting that you are limited and you need help in your life. And then number two, you must engage in prayer. And we are going to pray. Our time for prayer has gone into the teaching, but then we will pray. We need to pray and cry. And all through this week, listen, never make any decision in your life you are not sure God is part of. Are you hearing me? Whether it's decision for relationship, decision for marriage, don't listen to people who speak carnally and say, just do it. No. There are different ways God directs you. But I want to know that God is involved with everything I'm doing in my life. Don't just get up and say, except Jesus is not Lord. I must marry December. Who asked you? Is that in the blueprint of God's purposes for your life? Or I must marry a white man. Any Nigerian that comes to me back to send that, it must be a white man. That is your desire. But is that the purpose of God for your life? I must settle down in Abuja. There are people who are in Abuja living like animals. Whereas they would have left there and quietly gone to a place of honor where God has directed. And live like kings. Hallelujah. I must work with CBN. God is saying, start with Government Girls Secondary School. Start from there. There's nothing funny about it. It's not an embarrassing thing. Is it not a school? God is saying, start there. I want to teach you something. My younger brother, one month ago, he got a lecturing job. He, he had been trusting God for that lecturing job for a while. And nothing seemed to be happening. You know, tried, tried, tried. They had kept him and he was getting frustrated and one time we got talking and i said look young man listen you do the job the job he was doing he was teaching in one school guess his salary five thousand naira per month and if you don't come to teach the students they will still deduct something from it i told him remain there he's teaching you discipline he's teaching you submission God is preparing you so that you will be honored when you become a lecturer. I told him the lecturing job will come, but wait for God's time. It's amazing how if you hear God, it will sponsor your being patient. You want to start a ministry, God is saying, there is no doubt that I called you, but wait. You say, but God, people have been telling me this thing is burning. God says, sit down there. Fire was burning, but it did not consume the bush, so it won't kill you. Let the fire keep burning. Say, God, I'm feeling like taking all the souls. God is saying, just stay. I want to teach you. Keep cleaning the chairs like Stephen. Keep working in welfare department. And you say, God, my anointing is, this, this department is, 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 is underutilizing my anointing. God said, you will do ministry and be tired. Just wait.
I remember one lady many years ago, she used to disturb me about marriage. It was such a serious issue. It was a big deal to her. I want to marry, I want to marry. That was almost all her talk. And then she got married. And after just like six months or so, I called her one day and that joy, that, you know, that whole kinetic nature wasn't there again. I called her. What's wrong? I said, truly, if I knew her, I would have just taken my time and done. I said, are you serious? What about all of the things you said to me? All of the joy you want to raise your children a godly home. Where did it go? He said, it's still there. Oh, but I, I found out that any time you spend in taking your time is worth it. I said, really? Wisdom from experience. Could it be that this is a revelation for someone? You finish school. You've done everything. For one year, you did not get a job. People think you don't have faith. God is teaching you the art of waiting. It will be relevant when you see the kind of job he gives you. And you, sister, nobody has come to ask you out. You are godly. You are virtuous. Oh, Lord, are they not seeing me? God is saying, I shut their eyes. Because the quality of the man I want to bring requires preparation. Keep preparing yourself. And you will say, God, if you don't help me, I'm going to help myself. God, he says, it's okay. But if you can wait and follow through with me, the end is peace. Penina kept mocking Hannah. But the day Hannah had her own child, he was a prophet. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. In just five minutes that we have left, listen, before we pray, I want you to examine in one minute all the wrong decisions that you have taken because you did not seek the assistance of the holy spirit god told you pray about it you said it does not matter if only you prayed if only you took out time you probably would not have started the ministry now you've started the ministry and it's killing you if only you took out time to pray you would have known that that friend is a deceitful person he looked like an angel when he came, he told you he was a man of God. Little did you know that he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. But God was telling you, pray. But you said, I'm in love. Lift your voice and begin to pray. And say, Lord, I refuse to move without you. I refuse to take decisions in life without you. No matter how achievable they look. You can become successful without God. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. It pays, it pays to be divinely directed. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. There is a way of doing ministry that seems right. There is a way of doing business that seems right. There is a way of getting a job that seems right. There is a way of getting a husband and a wife that seems right but the bible says the end thereof are the ways of death there is a way of trying to get the anointing there is a way of trying to access revelation that seems right lift your voice and say lord i don't trust myself outside of you i need you to help me help me help me End confusion from my life. End darkness from my life. I'm tired of making stupid decisions. I'm tired of doing the wrong things. Go ahead and pray. I'm tired of cycle after cycle of mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes for as long as you learn the lesson. But when it becomes the theme of your life, you need divine direction. In one year, you have entered 10 relationships. They have all landed you in trouble. You need divine direction. You have entered 10 businesses. They've all landed you in trouble. You've started ministry everywhere. But you've ended up with scandal after scandal. Tonight is the time to flood it out with destiny. Go ahead and pray. 
Lord, I'm tired. Oh, I can't go anywhere without you. My destiny is at the mercy of your voice. My destiny is at the mercy of your word. Koinonia is at the mercy of your direction. Go ahead and pray. Just two prayer points tonight. Where is the place of my healing, oh God? Direct me. Where is the place of power? Where is the place where I will access life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point tonight is we're going to say, Lord, the direction I need to break the current limitation of my life to a new experience. Listen, brothers and sisters, I submit to you that the difference between where you are right now and the next level of your life is just one direction. A journey of 40 days can be turned into 40 years when you do not know the road. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If only you were divinely directed, you would have gotten a job by now. You would have even been maritally settled. There are many people who are barren. If they can be directed to the right ministry, barrenness will bow at once. You are going to pray. You know the areas of your life where you are tired of confusion. Submit yourself tonight and lift your voice and say, let light come. Let light come. Lead me to the place of light, oh God. Are you praying tonight inside and outside? Some of you, your coming here tonight is the answer to the voice of God in your life. Where you will hear truths that will connect you to the next level of destiny. the place where I can learn authentic ministry lead me to the place where I can find mentorship and building direct me show me light from scripture show me where I need to settle down I'm trusting you where is the next place of the assignment pray Reveal it to me. I don't want to be in a place you are not directed. Lift up your voice and pray. Direct me to my wife. Direct me to my husband. Direct me to the assigned job. Direct me to the circle of friends. Direct me to the messages. Direct me to the encounters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, between today and the miracle service on Friday, listen, pick any day of the week. It can be from tomorrow. Pick any day of the week and dedicate it to fast and pray. And the theme of that fasting is for divine direction in your life. Are you getting me? List all the things you know. Don't pretend like you have everything in order. You're going to say, Lord, this area, this area, this area, speak to me. I'm tired of silence from heaven. I want to provoke your voice. The messages you know by different men of God that have to talk about divine direction, get them. Sit under that anointing. Fast. Six to six, six to four. 
and settle down not the kind of fasting that you are answering every call and you are doing everything settle pick a convenient date and settle down and i assure you some of you as you are praying you will fall asleep and in that sleep you will see what you have never seen and that's what will connect you to the next level some of you as you are praying for the first time you will see a vision a real vision some of you will hear the audible voice of god some of you nothing spectacular may happen but one direction from the word of god and if you have graduated here and you are thinking of leaving don't be in a hurry to leave settle down and give yourself one day and say lord what is the blueprint for my life the bible says lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me last prayer point reveal to me the next blueprint of my life oh god go ahead and pray where am i going from here maritally financially ministerially pray i'm tired of confusion i'm a final year student in weeks i will be graduating but oh lord open the heavens over me i'm about to start ministry i'm about to start a business open my eyes i'm about to start a job give me direction yeah. Yeah. As you engage in prayer this week I guarantee you that the voice of God will speak for you in my place of prayer this week I will be praying for you from the depths of my heart we need divine direction accurate direction for the next level of our lives accurate direction accurate direction for the next level of our lives accurate direction for the next level of our lives hallelujah now please before we round up listen to a very important announcement hallelujah the protocol department is still having a little issue sorting out the venue for our miracle service we really apologize for this there is a program cgc will be having a program on that friday hallelujah cgc is having a program on friday and that means that it may cost us a lot um we may not be able to have the time the whole time for the program we can't say we we'll wait till they finish and so far i think they have not been able to secure charity and faith hallelujah they've not been able to secure charity and faith at all for the program now listen if for any reason we do not have the opportunity to use these venues then next week miracle service will be our first night vigil hallelujah if we are unable listen please if we are unable to secure this then we will have our night vigil we will invite we'll make a quick arrangement bring in guest artists i may invite one or two men of god to join me and we'll have a very explosive session from maybe 10 o'clock down till morning hallelujah we we'll allow people to sell we we'll allow people to sell water or sell Zobo or those of you that can make moi moi or whatever so that those who are hungry and will come here you will invite your loved ones and there will not be time we will not have time constraints we will settle down and prove to the devil that jesus is lord hallelujah so listen if if that is the case then most likely 
it is possible that we may still use this venue because I know um, CGC doesn't take all the time they are very very they'll start very fast so if they do finish just take note of our text messages please and please between today and tomorrow between today and tomorrow I'm um, called the protocol let me just know if we have concluded on that so that we'll announce it immediately All right, next Friday will be a night vigil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, believe me, you have not seen anything like it. It's not the vigil, you will sleep. Hallelujah. I won't be doing this alone. It's going to be a powerful thing. We'll make the arrangement from after this meeting. Hallelujah. Maybe we'll have Pastor I come from Kaduna, House on the Rock, and then we'll contact one or two people, and it will be an explosive time in the spirit. So, you invite everybody, your family members. Bring in your little snack. If you think you want to sleep, carry your bed from home and bring it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And to that effect, please, prayer department, you meet one hour before the time so that you can set the atmosphere. School of Ministry students, next week Saturday, um, we'll either fix the class in the afternoon or we'll just scrap it for that day. And then we'll use the extra class that we fixed. But there's, there's lecture tomorrow. Eight thirty. We're going to pray. Let's pray concerning the night vigil. Hallelujah. I'm sure that God wants to do a great thing. Don't you think so? Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, we thank you. It will be a time of visitation. It will be a time of visitation. A mighty time of visitation. Strange things will happen in this place. He will move in power. In the name of Jesus Christ. All the vessels that you will be using. You will come in might. You will come in power. There will be healings. There will be miracles. There will be manifestations of the spirit of God. I thank you because you are coming with great grace. In the name of Jesus let it be a night of prophecy let it be a night of miracles let it be a night of restoration let it be a night where you will locate men in the name of jesus wipe the tears of families by the power that is in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah time is 10 p.m please come early uh, we'll do our best to provide i know that because it's a night vigil there'll be so many people and those who are coming from other places please and please we'll make arrangement with the union of road transport workers so that there will be buses and bikes kekena pep enough to be able to convey people and bring them hallelujah praise the lord and then in the morning hopefully when we're done we'll make arrangement with them so that there'll be buses as usual just the way we have it every week i truly believe it will be a powerful time so take the opportunity to fast pray invite don't be selfish drag your family members let them come and sleep here hallelujah if they want to sleep just tell them behave like you are under the anointing and then you can lie down and sleep those who are worshiping with us for the first time we apologize our time is gone i'd like you to please find your way and come out quickly inside and outside inside and outside you're welcome we want to welcome you God bless you. God bless you. Go remain on your seat. The Lord brought you here to bless you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you